Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. What's in my hand, you ask? Well, this is the latest and greatest design from the RC with Adam design shop, uh, which is also called my brain. And this is an adjustable angle, no, an adjustable direction angled motor mount. So basically, a little bit of context here is I'm, I've been playing around with angled motor uh, mounts or angled motors on the quadcopter arms and you can see this is an old uh, older version it's a fixed angle quite a steep angle like 30 degrees or something um, this one is the new one and it's really cool because it is adjustable so you can loosen all the screws which that's not super super duper easy but you loosen all the screws and then you can just rotate the angle so that if you want it to be facing inward, like tilted inward, like this one is right here, you can do that, or you can tilt them outward, or tilt them forwards, tilt them backwards, and all of them, you know, independently as well. Um, and that's, so that's important. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to put this together. So your next question is probably, where can I get this? Well, I'll have this design up on my website, rcwithadam.com. It's gonna be under the 3D printing section uh, by the time you're watching this video. And you can 3D print it yourself um, using those STL files, um, not for commercial use, just for your own personal use. Uh, or you can use those files to print to 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 malfunction or if you don't have a 3d printer you can use those design files and upload them to pcbway.com because pcbway is the sponsor for this video and that is where i got these parts right here these are 3d printed um this top piece is clear and it's super cool and it's 3d printed uh using resin utr 8100 and uh that's Definitely, Ooh. I would definitely recommend them uh, if you need some prototyped parts. I've really enjoyed the parts that I've gotten from them, and they've done a really good job getting them out quickly. Um, if you are interested, I'll have a link to them down in the description below this video. And really, the whole ordering process is pretty super simple. You go into the rapid prototyping section, you select uh, what you need, so maybe CNC machining, 3D printing, like in this case, injection molding, uh, or even you know sheet metal uh, bending and, and molding, and then you just upload your file and and make sure it's the right file type. STL will be just fine for 3D printing. And then you just go through and you choose your quantity, you choose what kind of uh, material you wanna use and kind of the method that you want uh, done. You can even change uh, the color, uh, whether it's dyed or painted and stuff like that. And then if you have other specific requirements, maybe you have like markings that you need on the part or or uh, holes that need to be threaded or something like that, you can do that uh, further down in the options. Submit that and then they'll get back to you with uh, a final price once they review the order and make sure that they can actually um, you know, produce that order for you. And I, for me, they've gotten back uh, pretty much uh, like always within 24 hours, sometimes just a few hours. And then it usually gets shipped out. It, it depends on the part and how complex it is, but usually gets shipped out uh, within a couple weeks and then gets to me within a couple more weeks, I would say. Times vary depending on where you are and what's going on in the world. If that sounds interesting to you, check out pcbway.com. They take care of me and uh, make it so that I can keep bringing you videos and stuff. So uh, show them some love. Let them know that RC with Adam sent you. Link in the description down below. So let's go through the process of installing the next one. Uh, so we're gonna remove this and put uh, assemble this all together. We're gonna need a few screws, uh, quite a few screws actually. So. Um, <laughs> you don't necessarily have to have all of these, but you're going to need four, at least four, uh, eight millimeter, uh, screws, M3 screws, eight millimeters long. That's going to be to mount the motor. And then you're going to want four, uh, 10 millimeter. You could probably do eight millimeter actually, but 10 millimeters is what I have right now. Uh, M3 screws as well. And four M3 nuts. And that's it for the hardware there. And then to actually attach the bottom piece, we're gonna want an M5, so a five millimeter screw, like machine screw, and a nut. And uh, we're gonna put this all together. It's pretty straightforward, but I'm gonna take you through the whole process right now. First, we're going to take off the old motor and the old motor mount uh, as I have it on here. So that was the old motor mount. We got that out of there. And now here we have our motor. With our top piece, we're going to install the, um, the, I actually don't know that they have a name for these yet. The screws that hold it in place and keep it from moving. 10 millimeter screws, or I guess eight millimeter. 
and we're gonna thread them in like that. So you'll see that there are cutouts for the three millimeter nuts. We're just gonna drop them in place and then hold them with a finger and then just thread in the screw into the nut. You'd probably be fine just using um, three of these, uh, but you know, to, to get the maximum security and kind of evenness, we're gonna go with four. Let's go over to our bottom piece right here. And this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm also, oops, we have our M5 nut and that's gonna go right in this hex cutout. We're gonna put our M5 nut right in there, set it in there and then put our M5 screw through the bottom and just go ahead and thread it into the nut and just kind of pull down to make sure that the nut is seated all the way uh, down. Um, and that's pretty much it for the bottom part. That's that step and then we can take the screw out and just set these aside for now. And now we have our top part with the locking screws in place. Let's go ahead and take our eight millimeter screws and put them down in the slots that are cut out and we're gonna line those up on the motor. Now everything is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which way it goes, uh, which, which, which screws go into which part of the motor. And we're going to just tighten, or not tighten it down, we're gonna thread it. We're just gonna get it threaded so that it stays on. And we're gonna do that for all of the screws. Just gonna drop down in there like that and just line it up. There we go. Just gonna thread it a little bit. All right, you might run into a little bit of trouble. I tried to have cutouts on the edge to fit the, the driver bit, but it's still kind of a tight fit. Um, and then of course, if you have a different size motor, that might be different. So this, this one has, um, I think, fifth, uh, 18 millimeter motors, uh, motor mount spacing for the screws. Um, so that means the screws are kind of towards the outer edge, which makes it a little bit more difficult to put together. Um, so if you have a smaller motor, uh, that won't be as big of a deal. Come on, buddy, get in there. Once we have all of the screws threaded, then we can tighten it down. You don't want to go crazy on the torque, but we do want them nice and snug. Since this is a uh, 3D printed part, we can kind of expect that we, you know, we may need to retighten these. Probably putting Loctite on here would be a good idea, uh, but I just don't have any handy at this moment. Because it is possible if the motors get very hot that they could um, they could kind of sink into this plastic. So just keep that in mind that if your motors are getting really hot, you're probably gonna need to retighten these screws um, every now and then. Now we have the part that attaches to the motor or maybe you could call this the locking cylinder or something cool like that. Now, to mount the bottom piece that's actually angled there, the angled mount, you need to have a hole that's at least five millimeters uh, in diameter on the arm that's you know centered in the motor, uh, motor mounting holes on the arm of your quadcopter. Uh, and so we do, and most do, like a lot of them do. And you'll also notice that we do have some holes ar arrayed uh, around this main five millimeter hole. That's so that if we can get it so that it lines up with one of these motor mounting holes, we can add another screw just to help keep it from uh, twisting um, or you know kind of minimize the movement essentially. So all we're gonna do is take our mount, and because our quadcopter is upside down right now. So we're going to put this on the top side, put our screw through the bottom side, just get it to thread. There we go. Now we're gonna switch from a two millimeter hex drive to a three millimeter hex drive to fit these larger M5 screws. Okay, and now at this point, you decide where you want the angle to be. So you'll notice that on the back of this, or I would call it the back, the, on the high side of this mount, we have this little notch right here. That's just to line it up uh, so that you can line up and see like exactly which way the angle is facing. Um, so like on this side, uh, I basically faced it so that it was pointing right back down the arm and then I can do that on this same side and that way they'll be symmetrical uh, or they'll be you know, kind of mirrored uh, in case that's what we want, you know, if, if that's what we're trying to do. But that way it just kind of lets you aim it a little bit. Now, I will say this is kind of the most annoying part of this is just that you do need two different sizes of driver bits to actually uh, make adjustments. So 
I would like to change that, but it's a little tricky. That's how it sits on there. And then uh, we want to make sure that our screws are in their little slots. And then we can just slide this right on top of there. And you'll notice that there's this little notch right here, a little notch in the bottom uh, angled part in the angled mount. And then that's where those locking screws are going to lock into. And you could do some different things if you want them to really lock in. Like you could just figure out what angle you want and then drill a hole through it where that screw is gonna line up and then just screw it in like that. So that would be another good option. Switching back to the smaller M2 X drive, we're just gonna wind all of these screws down and we're gonna try and do it evenly again. Now you kind of run into a situation like see right there, it's gonna be really hard to get to it. If it's lining up with the arm and you can't get to it, you might not wanna even bother with it. There you go, now we have it all connected. It looks awesome. Uh, this is a seven inch size quad, by the way. We got seven inch props on here. And you'll notice that with this uh, angle of the mount, I think it's 15 degrees. I'll put it, you know, you'll see it in the description or the all that stuff. But with this angle, it makes it so that it's not so extreme that the props are gonna cut back into the arm. That's how you assemble it. And uh, again, you can get that at rcwithadam.com or you can uh, even uh, get them printed for you from PCB Way. Sponsor for this video. It's kind of a pain because you have to change bit sizes. So that's not super great, but it's relatively very easy to change the angle mount as opposed to the old way I was doing it, which was changing four screws on the bottom and then four screws that attach to the motor because you can't twist the, mo like you have to be able to change the angle without actually changing where the motor wires are coming from. So that part has to stay the same. Um, so yeah, there you go. Thanks uh, for watching everybody. If you like this, uh, leave a comment or if you have questions, let me know. And if you download it uh, and use it and you know show people, uh, tag me at RC with Adam on Instagram and stuff like that. All right, have a fantastic day everybody and I will see you again very soon.